Today I'm going to show you the new screen time feature in iOS 12 on an iPad. Now you'll find this in settings and screen time, you need to turn it on. One of the features of screen time is that you can set up additional parental controls for your children using family sharing. So it's uh, asking the question there, if it's your iPad or your child's iPad, the purpose of screen time is it collects data on what you're doing on your iPad. So it gives you an idea of how much time you're playing your favorite game or browsing through your Facebook feed. And it will do this on all your devices, provided they have the same Apple ID. You can set some limits for yourself using this setting. So the screen time dashboard is where you get in detailed information about how much time you're spending on all your devices. I currently only have an iPad, so it's only going to show me my screen time for that device. So when I tap that, the top pane displays the total time spent on my iPad during this day. And I can also see the last seven days on how much time I've spent on the iPad and what areas I'm spending it, what categories I'm spending that time. The information is displayed as bar graphs, which you can tap to get more information. Now below that I can see the most used apps that I've used today and the time spent in accessing those apps. And I can show categories or show apps and websites. So the categories are going to be uh, all the entertainment apps that I've used and it groups all the, ca all the apps that you have into to categories which you can't change. Now, if I decided that I was spending too much time looking at the footy live app, I could add a limit at this point to only allow myself to use that app for, say, 30 minutes or whatever. I'll show you that later. When I tap each particular app, then I can see specifically when I used it and how long I, I spent using that app, what category it's in, age rating etc and then I can also add a limit if it was becoming too much. Under the app list is the pickups section and I can see how many times I've picked up my iPad, how often and what time of day. This might be useful if you wanted to see where big chunks of your day had disappeared and you then might want to restrict access to certain apps at specific times of the day. Below the pickup section is the notification summary it displays how many notifications you've received, how often you receive a notification, and which apps are sending them. Tap an app, which takes you to the notification setting for that app. And then you can turn off notifications or change other settings like banner style or sound. So if I didn't want any notifications from YouTube, I could turn them off here and I won't get any more. If you're getting a lot of notifications and they're too distracting, then this is useful just to turn off um, one notification for a specific app or you could turn them all off. The summary nature of, of this setting is also useful because you can see what times they're coming in and how frequently they're coming. But once you see the type of use you have for your iPad in this case, and if you think it's overtaking your life, then you've got a few ways that you can control that usage. And the first is downtime, which lets you schedule a time each day when your device is off limits. And when you set downtime, only the apps that you have approved can be accessed and everything else is off limits. And this is meant to remove the urge to use your iPad and specific apps when you might be working or studying or getting distracted by notifications. You could also use it just before bedtime when you should be winding down before sleep and not checking your Facebook feed one last time. Uh, note that the downtime settings will apply to any Apple device that's signed into iCloud. And you simply set a time of day, a start and end time when you want to not use your iPad. So just to test it out, I'm going to start in about because it's about nearly three o'clock when I'm recording this. So I start about 3.05 and end at 4.06. Tap the arrow to accept it. And now 
because it's nearly five minutes, I get a message to say, you've got five minutes remaining until downtime. And at this point, I have to set which apps I want to use when downtime is on. So I can go to Always Allowed. And it gives me some apps automatically, like Messages, FaceTime, Maps, and I've added a few more that I want to use all the time. And I'm also going to add the Notes app. So I've got a list of all my apps here that I can put into Always Allowed. So I'm going to add Notes. I want to be able to use Notes, and I'll go back to the top there. These are the only apps that will be available once downtime uh, is enabled. And then go back. So downtime's already started, and you can see some of the apps that are greyed out that I can't use. Uh, Notes, it's on my dock, is not greyed out because I've allowed that one, Fiverr, um, which I want to use all the time. Um, FaceTime, find my iPhone. Some of these, these apps were already there by default, and I can add any app I want into that Always Allowed section to use during downtime. But, I mean, the object is that I can't use Facebook. And you can see on the dock that it's greyed out. And the only things that are not greyed out are Safari, 1Password and Notes. If I want to override downtime, I can tap on Facebook and it will give me that message. But I can just say, I don't care. I want to ignore that limit. And then you can uh, ignore that limit that you've just imposed on yourself for today or it can remind you in 15 minutes or you can cancel it. So I'm going to say, I will ignore the limit for today because I want to, use, want to see my Facebook feed, which makes the whole process a little bit irrelevant. But it will also tell you in downtime reports that you've done that. You can turn off downtime, of course, anytime you like. It's sort of a bit like the honor system. If you really want to get control of your life back, well, you've got these opportunities to do that, but you have to actually force yourself to do them. Now, the other thing you can do is set app limits, which is different from downtime. So in app limits, I can set a time limit for how long I can use a whole category of app or one specific app. So if I want to add a limit, all apps have been grouped into categories, so you can't change that, which I think is a little bit awkward at this stage. However, with the Allow More Apps section, you can pick out individual apps from that category to remove from that time limit. So if I selected Productivity, that I want to set a limit on all apps that Apple consider are productivity apps. In this case, there's Notes, Tesla, and 55 more, and I have no idea what those 55 are. I'm going to add a limit to productivity. And then I've got to select how long I can use these apps for using that scroll wheel. So I might just, so I'm just going to give myself two hours to use these. And if you want to customize days for different days of the week, I could tap on customize day and say that on Saturday, I'm going to give myself four hours to use these apps. And go back. To edit apps simply means change the category. So if I wanted to change the category to games and, and only allow myself two hours to use games, I could tap add. And to, to delete that limit, you delete it there. And because I've changed games, I'm going to change the limit as well and make it, well, five minutes just for the uh, argument's sake. So only five minutes to use a game. Tap the arrow to accept it. And go back to screen time. And again, if I want to allow a specific game, I could choose from, there's the other uh, list to say I've only got five minutes remaining. So I can go into Always Allowed and just select the game that I want to exclude from that list of, of games. So I want to add Pyramid Solitaire to that list of games that is excluded from that 10 minute block of time I've allowed myself to play. So with this game, it's five minutes remaining for that game today, so I can keep playing for five minutes. But the, uh, the game that I have allowed, I can, can play that indefinitely because I haven't put any limits on it. And once you reach your time limit, that's the message that you get. You've reached your limit and you can ignore the limit again by tapping that and ignoring it for today or remind me in 15 minutes. So again, it, it will rely on the uh, 
on a system. You can see other games there, like the one in the middle there, Uncrossed, is still has app limits on it. So I can't use that one again, unless I launch it and ignore the limit. Or I turn it off and go back into app limits and turn it off by deleting it. Now, if it's your, if it's, uh, your iPad but your kids are using it, you can set some content and privacy restrictions. And to do that, you need to use a screen time passcode, probably a different one to the passcode that, um, that wakes up your iPad. So putting in a passcode, you only get um, four number passcode. So we're going to go into content and privacy restrictions and put in the passcode and turn on content and privacy. And these changes, many of these privacy and content restrictions are also just in the, the usual security settings under privacy. Uh, you can turn off, or for each one of them, you, will, you can allow or not allow uh, the ability to install apps, delete apps, have in-app purchases, whether you require a password or not to actually do anything with apps. So there's an awful lot of restrictions here you can do. The built-in apps that come with the iPad, you can disable them completely. So if you don't want your child buying anything from the iTunes store or downloading a podcast because it's not age appropriate, you could turn it off, turn off Siri and dictation, whatever you want to turn off, they won't be available. And when I tap that to accept those changes, when I'm searching for one of those apps, for example, I disabled the iTunes store, if I try and look for it, it's just not visible anywhere on the iPad at all because I've disabled it completely. You can set up content restrictions, so you can set uh, the ratings for whatever country you want or whether you allow music, podcasts and news to, to be explicit or clean. So you've got a bit of uh, granularity there in what things you allow, what content you allow your kids to see. Websites, particularly, you can give them unrestricted access or allow only websites only that Apple have given you. There's a list of them there. We can add your own as a whitelist, or you can limit adult websites. And within that, because it's a, a website, an adult website is not necessarily a pornographic website. It could be anything with adult content. So you can add particular websites of your own or never allow certain websites. Um, you can also turn off Siri and the Game Center, particularly if you don't want them playing games with uh, other people who you don't know who they are or doing screen recordings or adding friends. It's a powerful, powerful section, this. And you've got all these other settings down here, passcode changes and account changes. In the privacy settings under here, uh, what apps have requested access to your iPad. So if I don't want anybody using my microphone, I can turn off Facebook, Skype, my talking pet, any apps that want to use my microphone. So you've got some specific things you can do in this privacy section, including in this one, where you can turn on or off sharing your location or turn off location services altogether, manage which apps have access to your location and how long. You can change the screen time passcode here. You can also turn off screen time altogether. So is screen time worth the trouble? I think it's a good way of monitoring your internet and app usage and can give you greater control over your digital health. And after using it for a few weeks, you'll be able to see what apps you're using and overusing, so it can give you a greater sense of, of having your priorities all wrong or demonstrating a complete lack of productivity. You can turn things off and set limits for yourself. And while app limits appears to be very broad, you can always use the always allowed section to bypass this to keep specific apps that you want to use all the time active when downtime is enabled.